never give up on your dreams. If you're over 30 or 40, you might have given up on some big dreams, right? Trust me, I get it. I've had a lot myself. And sometimes I struggle with my own dreams because a lot of them didn't come true. The way I look at it is we can just kind of redirect them, redirect that energy. What was that dream about? Why did I want that dream? What was that dream going to do for me? How did I think I was going to feel when I was living that dream? And then go after that. Broaden the dream is what I'm trying to say. In today's busy world, how can we find the inspiration, knowledge, and energy to live a healthy and empowered life? If we balance and harmonize our mind, exercise our body, live according to the laws of nature, and connect to spirit, can we find a way to heal, become our authentic self, and live our purpose with love? I am your hostess, Amy Fournier, and welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite. Welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. This show is about helping you to be more healthy and fit in mind, body, and spirit, as well as harmonize your masculine and feminine energy, tap into your intuition, your true source of power, and awaken your authentic self. Today is a Fast Friday. We're doing this because, well, you asked me to. I had done Fast Fridays back in the beginning of the show about 400 years ago. No, I'm kidding. Just a couple of years ago when I started the show and a couple of you reached out to me and said, you know, I really like those little mini episodes that you did that were short, but were really impactful because they just gave me a little extra motivation, a little extra inspiration or even education. And uh, hey, could you bring them back? So I said, oh, what the hell? Sure. I love inspiring you. I love learning. I'm always got my nose and some kind of book or podcast or show or something. And uh, I love feeling inspired and, and sharing that feeling with you. In fact, that's a big part of the mission of the show is helping increase your inspiration, just the spirit that's in you. So we brought Fast Fridays back. They are a little bonus mini episode every other week, and I hope you enjoy them. The topics are always very, very different. Today's Fast Friday is going to be talking about how to access and live and stay in the fifth dimension. Okay, this episode is referring to a full episode, episode number 77, in which we refer to the steps to self-care with my guest, none other than world-renowned astrologer, Marilyn Dumont, who is so epic. She was on my show twice, not once, but twice. But we're gonna talk about the 12 steps to self-care with Marilyn that she shared with me on episode 77. And you might want to check out episode 77 because that's a doozy. We talk about the Hopi prophecy, navigating our times with confidence, grace, and community while stepping into the fifth dimensional reality. It still applies very much today, even though that episode is back in 77. Okay, so let's get into how do we access and live in this new fifth dimension that we are all like it or not kicking and screaming maybe boldly stepping into well marilyn shared with us 12 steps 12 rules for self-care here they are you ready all right number one if it feels wrong don't do it simple right if something feels wrong don't do it now i'm just going to add a note Remember, it says if it feels wrong. It doesn't say if you think it's wrong. Okay? Awakening Aphrodite. Drop into your body. Have your body tell you if something's right or wrong. And it's different for all of us. Some people get a little stomach lightheartedness or, you know, like a uh, butterflies or a little tingling. Some people get a drop in their energy. Some people actually physically fall backward a little bit, just ever so slightly. Some people have an elevation or an increased heart rate or a little spurt of adrenaline. Okay, it's different for all of us. Okay, so number one, if it feels wrong, don't do it and learn the way your body communicates its intuition. Number two, say what you mean. This is another way of saying speak your truth, right? Speak your truth. Say what you mean, and I'll add, mean what you say, right? Uh, one thing I like to try to pride myself on is, you know, I'm not going to say something if I don't mean it. Like, for example, how many times you see a friend and they're like, oh, we got to get together. Let's make plans. And of course, they never do, right? 
or well, you got to come over sometime and they never invite you. <laughs> For me, if I don't, if I say you got to come over sometime, like that means I really want you to come over. I'm not just going to say that to be polite. <laughs> so a good rule of thumb, say what you mean. Also, it's another way of saying don't be passive aggressive, right? Have the courage to speak your truth. Speak your truth. Okay. Number three. Don't be a people pleaser. Oh my gosh. For me, it's just going to have to go to number one. <laughs> you know, I'm a reforming people pleaser, but I'm getting a lot better. Let me tell you a lot better. And that has a lot to do with self-love and feeling worthy just as you are. You don't have to earn love, respect, admiration, and you don't need external boosting up, right? Get your power and your affirmation and your validation from the inside out. Don't we all want that? I guess for some people it's easier than for others. Well, for me, no, I had to learn it. I'm still learning it. It's a big part of my show, which I try to share with you. So for God's sake, don't be a people pleaser. Please yourself first, please others, but don't forget yourself. <laughs> Number four, always follow your instincts. Always follow your instincts. Instincts are part of our animal nature. You know what we're half spiritual, half animal, right? So if we ignore our instincts, we are totally omitting half of our being in our daily lives, which is not too smart, right? You're, you're missing half of the input, half of the communication from the world at large, as well as yourself as to what is the best thing for you to do. Which way should you go? What should you say? Should you take that job? What should you do today? What, what is your life's path? Should you be with that person? Should you say yes? Should you say no? We have to have a relationship with our instincts. And I'll note that word in stinks in it's within, it's not outside of you. So we have to develop our instincts and instincts are different than intuition, by the way. Number five, never speak badly about yourself. Oh, this is such a big one, right? I do this all the time. Actually, I do this a lot less. Thank goodness, I'm getting better. Or at least if I do it, I've caught myself or I catch myself and I'll say, oh, mean, mean, mean. Uh, I used to teach my clients that do the rubber band test. Did you ever hear that one? You just put an elastic band around your wrist and every time you say something uh, berating about yourself or negative about yourself, like, oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, you're such an idiot. Oh, you did it again. Oh, I can't do that. Or these pants make me look fat or whatever right? Oh, look at all those wrinkles <laughs> or whatever it may be. You take that rubber band in your hand on your wrist and you pull it out hard and snap it back. And ouch, that physical pain is a good embodiment reminder of what you're doing to your soul energetically. Every time you say something bad about or to yourself. Okay. It's physical pain but you're actually doing that energetically and crushing, crushing your spirit. You wouldn't speak that way to a little baby or a beautiful little child or a puppy or someone that's scared or hurt or whatever, or confused or just trying their best, right? So don't do it to yourself. Never speak badly about yourself. At the very least, you could say something like, all right, you screwed up. All right, you did it again. But come on, we're going to get up. We're going to do better. Come on, come on, come on. You got to be your own coach. You've heard me say that a million times, right? You got to be your own cheerleader. You got to be your own parent. You got to be all that stuff for yourself. So therefore you can be whole and sovereign unto yourself. Number six, never give up on your dreams. Ah, oh, I need this one so bad. Never give up on your dreams. What are your dreams? If you're over 30 or 40, you might have given up on some big dreams, right? Because we've had disappointments at that point in our lives and some that really, really are soul crushing. Trust me, I get it. I've had a lot myself. And sometimes I struggle with my own dreams because a lot of them didn't come true. They just didn't. And, you know, I like to believe that, you know, the whole thing that it's not it's not to you, it's for you and the greater good and the learning lessons. I've made progress in my life, that's for sure. But I have a lot of regrets and 
sadness as well, like we all do, right? So it's hard. It's hard. Number six. Number six is hard. Never give up on your dreams. You know, sometimes the way I look at it is we can just kind of redirect them, redirect, redirect that energy. What was that dream about? Why did I want that dream? What was that dream going to do for me? How did I think I was going to feel when I was living that dream? And then go after that. So don't, you know, kind of like broaden the dream is what I'm trying to say. Like break down the dream, break it apart, unpack it a little. What was that dream about? Why did I want to perform on Broadway? What was it about that that was my dream? Was it the feeling I would have of expressing myself, of getting into characters, of go going into the different emotions, of performing and delighting people and inspiring them and making them feel something? Well, so I guess it's not too late for that dream for me, but in some way, I've now kind of pivoted that into my show. Hopefully I'm inspiring you and making you feel something. And it's a way of me expressing myself and my soul and my unique soul imprint on this planet. And for us to share and connect together the human experience. That's what my show does for me. It also teaches me a lot with the amazing guests I have on it. But what I'm saying is it was a, it's a way for me rather than be sad about that dream of not being on Broadway that I had, that the fact that it didn't come true. And again, it still might. I'm still alive, right? I could still do it, I guess. But I can think of like, what was that dream doing for me that I wanted it? And I can kind of parlay it into something else in my life now. So it's just an idea for you. And, you know, come to think of it, I never really had anybody talk about uh dreams that way a way you know unfulfilled dreams a, a good way to work with it without the pain so something to think about number seven don't be afraid to say no oh boy this is a big one don't be afraid to say no you have to have strong energetic boundaries i've got a great episode for you with sari gilman sari gilman is uh, just amazing expert on emotional energetic boundaries we have to have that boundary uh, because as Paul Check, my mentor taught me, until you learn to say no, your yes means nothing. And that brings us to number eight. Don't be afraid to say yes. <laughs> That's something I'm working on in my personal life. Just say yes when someone asks you to do something, even if you don't feel like it, even if you're too busy, even if you're tired, even just say yes, say yes. So having discretion, my friends, with numbers uh, seven and eight. Don't be afraid to say no. And don't be afraid to say yes is important, right? You have to know when it's good for you to say no. And when it's good for you to say yes, again, be your own parent. Number nine, be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. That makes me think about being gentle. Again, treating yourself like a young child, because we are, we all are still hurt children inside, aren't we? We're walking around these adult bodies, but we, a lot of us have the emotional consciousness of childhood that some of us get stuck in certain places of our lives. So be kind to yourself. If you're listening to this show, you're trying, right? You're, you're looking, you're looking to help yourself. You're looking to grow. And that's, that's, that admirable, right? That's something. You're not just complaining and not doing anything about it. You're taking action. So be kind to yourself. Be patient. Be that beautiful, snuggling mother that you always wanted to have to yourself. Number 10, let go of what you can't change. Oh, yes. We all know that serenity prayer, right? Let go of what you can't control and what you can't change like the weather. Okay. Right. No sense complaining about it. Okay. Just a silly example. Number 11, stay away from drama and negativity. Lord help us. Yes. Stay away from drama and negativity. This one's pretty easy for me. I just don't have any tolerance for any of that junk, but, uh, I don't know, maybe you get caught up in social media threads and Twitter wars and all this stuff. I just don't want it in my life. I try not to spiritually bypass, but I just don't want that in my energetic field, you know, and even negative comments or whatever. I just don't, I, frankly, I don't understand people who just use their own time and energy to put someone else down or criticize, you know, the saying, you can't judge someone else before you walk a mile in their moccasins, right? So 
staying away from drama and negativity. Remember, we have a mental emotional diet that's just as important as our physical food diet. You have to guard your mind. You have to guard what you expose your ears, your eyes to, your energy to, the, the what you watch on TV, what you listen to in the news, what podcasts you listen to, what people around you are saying, their beliefs. These are like like uh well, there, you know how you walk in a room and you smell a certain smell, good, bad, indifferent, doesn't matter. It's going into your being, the smell, just like that thoughts, beliefs, these are going into your energetic field. So we have to be very astute and be very mindful of the things we're exposing ourselves to emotionally, physically, mentally, energetically, visually, auditory, all of these things. And it's very, very real the way these things make you feel. So stay away from drama and negativity. And lastly, the 12th tip is, you know it, what would you say? What's the last tip? Love. That's it. Then encapsulates the whole 12. That's what it all comes down to, my friends. It's all about love. It's by love. It's from love. It's for love. It's to love. It's with love. It's ultimately the goal, isn't it? It's the source. It's the goal. It's the origin, the inception, as well as the finish line. Love. Wow. Powerful stuff. You might want to reread this list of 12. And again, refer to episode uh, 77 with Marilyn Dumont, where we access how to live in the fifth dimension in more detail. And I've also put these 12 tips on my website. Do you subscribe to my email list? I send out a newsletter once or twice a month to just my exclusive email list with things like this, things that I come across that inspire me and help me in my life. And I share them with you. So you might want to hop on that. It's just on my website. It's in the show notes as well. My website is my name, amyfournier.com. And uh, I put these tips on one of my blog posts. So you can check them out there. I printed them and put them on my refrigerator, by the way, to remind myself, particularly of some of the ones that I have more trouble with. <laughs> we all have the ones that will have more trouble than others. Anyway, I hope this helped you. I'm so grateful that you're here. If you want to support me in the show, subscribe, share it with a friend, and oh my gosh, leave a review. That is the best way to support me in the show. And you can check out my favorite products that supports me as well. And I only put stuff up there on my e-store on my website that I use personally because they work and I love them and I need to share the love. So thank you for being with me and I'll see you next time on Awakening Aphrodite. Would you like to support my mission to help empower people all over the world to be all of who they truly are? If so, please subscribe to the show, leave a review on iTunes, and share it with a friend. And if you're looking to take immediate action to align your energy and optimize your health, visit amyfournier.com. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite. Let's awaken her together in you. I'm your hostess, Amy Fournier, and I already can't wait to be with you again and for you to hear what I have planned for the next show. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. To learn more about Amy, check out her website, amyfournier.com. That's A-M-Y-F-O-U-R-N-I-E-R.com. You can also check out Amy's live and on-demand virtual fitness and yoga classes and sign up for her newsletter to receive a free mini ebook of three of her top tips for making holistic health a lifestyle. Again, that's amyfournier.com and get your ebook sent to your email immediately. Connect with Amy on the daily on Instagram at FitAmyTV, F-I-T-A-M-Y-T-V, and watch many of the podcast episodes and subtopic clips on her YouTube channel, which is also FitAmyTV. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time on Awakening Aphrodite.